This is your weekly wrap up for Friday, June 7th, 2024. Thanks for tuning in. We appreciate it. And we have a lot to cover. So as always, let's dive right in. This last week's shows, we had Derek Johnson, who gave us a great perspective on the President Trump situation, uh, future VP candidates as well, some economic updates that he had up his sleeve. Uh, the ever-present reverend, as he calls himself, Jim Willie, was on for uh, a second podcast, and there's some great information that you might want to take notes on with that as those shows come forth shortly. Uh, good friend, Andy Shackman from Miles Franklin. We had a very good, meaty conversation about the latest with the economic situation in America, as well as the whole of the world. And of course, Dr. Ian from Piram with the latest updates. They have a very cool and solution-oriented product for women for pre- and post-menopausal symptoms for women, and that will be coming out on a show that we'll be doing with him towards the end of the month. Upcoming shows for next week, we have good friend and mentor Eli Weber, and of course, I'll be doing a presentation with good friend Nick Benyamin on the latest on the reset. So here are the headline news. John Deere begins layoffs with 200 employees as sales take, sales take a sharp decline. According to the Wall Street Journal, and more specifically, a survey which was conducted by Technomic, QR codes actually discourage patrons from dining at an establishment altogether. Just two years ago, the market research firm similarly reported that 88% of customers prefer paper menus at sit-down restaurants. Tacky QR codes will be replaced once again by paper menus. So we're seeing the old COVID pandemic is fading away summarily at every front. New York Stock Exchange says a technical issue that caused Berkshire Hathaway to be displayed down after companies like GMI, GMA, GME excuse me, had their stock doubled at the opening bell just before trading was officially halted. But I'm sure that was a coincidence. Intense fires broke out in the Israeli-occupied Golan Heights earlier this week, following today's attacks by Hezbollah, according to the uh, Cradle publication. 8,000 acres were affected as a result of the fire. Put that in perspective, folks, the rough land mass of New York City is roughly 10 to 12,000 square miles. Uh, well, excuse me, that would be about uh, 10 miles plus of of land in New York City. So this flame, these fires almost engulfed the entire land mass of New York City to put that in perspective. It's pretty, pretty daunting. They are now, Israel, by the way, working on completing their attacks of the deep state in Syria. Next, they will turn their attention to what we're waiting on, Iraq slash Iran and the secret nuclear power plants. Interestingly enough, Russia is about to announce what we already know, which is that they have summarily defeated Ukraine. And you know that because they're building up areas of infrastructure and food in Donbass and Lugansk, which are Russian provinces, which are comprised mostly by Russian nationalists that speak Russian. They wouldn't be doing that if the war was still in play. As a result, when they announce that, expect them to go work with China on a one to two day cleanup invasion of uh, Ukraine 2.0 and China Taiwan, where they will free up the Vietnamese Dong. And Jim Willie had something to say about that on the show as well. Altria, which is the parent company of major cigarette manufacturers like Marlboro, is dropping millions of shares. Uh, this is according to Shutterstock. U.S. manufacturer Altria Group, which produces, again, Marlboro cigarettes, is planning to sell its shares in Anheuser-Busch InBev, which is the parent company of Bud Light. You know what happened with that with the woke agenda. Those are 35 million shares were worth $2.3 billion when the market closed. Uh, Burger Fi set to close all locations in California, citing the minimum wage $20 price hike. We're going to see that become systemic throughout the country as well. Red Lobster set to close another 100 locations. Rubio's Coastal Girl, a popular Mexican restaurant chain known for its fish tacos, is shutting down 48 locations in California alone. This decision comes in response to the increased operational costs linked to California's, you guessed it, $20 an hour minimum wage hike for fast food workers. As of the time of this broadcast, precious metals way out like this, gold coming in at 2392.10. So it's kissing that $2,400 mark, which we know it will eclipse shortly. Silver making a rebound, $31.37. Brent crude, 79.92. So the bank's banal attempt to try to slam down price suppression on silver is backfiring as more of us continue to buy it. So keep buying. It really helps the cause for you and for, for all of us. Uh, some notable deaths and resignations. Former UCLA forward Drew Gordon died at the age of 30, 33 in a car accident in Portland. Drew was the older brother of Denver Nuggets power forward Aaron Gordon, who was remembered for his collegiate and brief NBA career, as well as his international play. Professional wrestler going by the name of the handle of Dirty Money worked on the dangerous adrenaline wrestling gladiators tour, as well as the Vanguard Championship Wrestling and Primal Conflict Wrestling 
has reportedly died at the young age of 44. His real name was Jermaine Robinson. The former Los Angeles Times sports columnist T.J. Simmers died at the age of 73, according to Lance Pugmieri of BoxingScene.com. Simmers had been diagnosed with a brain tumor, according to Awful Announcing. Hollywood actress and Broadway star Janice Page has died at the age of 101. She was one of the last surviving stars of the golden age of Hollywood. She starred in many movies over an illustrious 60-year career that included movies like The Pajama Game, The Doris Day Comedy, Please Don't Eat the Daisies, and Silk Stockings, in which she danced with the late, great Fred Astaire. Actor Eric Anderson has died. He was 67. Anderson's wife, fellow actress Saxon Trainer, confirmed the sad news on Instagram over the weekend. The actor and writer made countless appearances on several hit crime and TV shows and dramas, as well as sci-fi series, but his most recognizable role was arguably when he portrayed Dr. Edward Porter, the father of Carrie Russell's Felicity on Felicity. Anderson was featured in nine episodes of the Emmy-winning series, which was created by J.J. Abrams in 1988 and ran four seasons until it wrapped up in the spring of 2022. Former Major League player and coach Tony Scott recently died per various sources, including Brett McGuire of MLB.com. Scott was 72 years old and the cause of death was not reported. Maria de Aragon, who played Greedo in the Star Wars series, has reportedly died at the age of 81. Unfortunately, the actress was uncredited contributor to the film. Jay Kane is the owner and CEO of talent agency TalentWorks. Uh, New York died on April 24th, Island Park, New York, following a brief illness. He was just 65. His death was announced by family and friends today after plans for a memorial service that was finalized. Andrew Tham, a champion boxer from Scotland, has tragically passed away from a fatal motor vehicle collision. He was just 28. Popular rapper, Brother Marquis, best known for his involvement in the Miami hip hop group, Two Live Crew in the 80s, passed away this week at only the age of 58. Cause of death has not yet been released. Terry Hayden, an actor who guided the careers of such notable Irish actors as Gabriel Byrne, Ruth Nega, Brendan Gleeson, and his son, Domshell Gleeson, died April 18th in hospice care in Dublin after a long illness. She was 75. In Milan, Luciano Benetton, a co-founder of the apparel brand, announced he was stepping down uh, this season in May and June as chairman in an interview published on Saturday with Milan Daily, Corriere della Sera. He blamed current management for the losses of 100 million euros, which would be approximately $108.5 million US that he discovered last year. Larry Allen, an NFL Hall of Fame offensive lineman, died unexpectedly on Sunday during a family vacation in Mexico. He was just 52. Allen made the Pro Bowl 11 times during his 14 year career, most of it primarily with the Dallas Cowboys. John McAllister, who starred in the Netflix reality series Unlocked, a jail experiment, died on Sunday, June 2nd in Arkansas, according to THV11 and GoFundMe page for his family. He was only 29. So that unfortunately wraps up the deaths and re resignations, and we pray for those families affected by their losses of, of the people we mentioned. Uh, my commentary for this week is quite simple. I've been trying to pare it down because I think most of you get the gist. This isn't speaking to the ones who are doing the work. This is the ones who are still working on changes. And those of you who know who you are, the shoe fits somewhere. Uh, do not be distracted of the things you see optically on the earth. Focus on what matters. Oftentimes we're asking God folks to bless us with millions or billions of dollars or more. Yet some of, some of us are complaining endlessly about this and that and what we're not getting and what we don't have and all the wrong that we think we see optically but yet we're expecting him to bless us. And my question to those folks is how does that work? How can we be double-minded, expect God to bless us when we're constantly complaining? Yes, things are happening. Yes, circumstances are what they are. We are all going through stories and situations, but the key is to have gratitude. And please don't push back in the comments about gratitude. My life is terrible. Every time you speak that out, you don't realize you're making a pact with the, the enemy, Satan. You've given him permission, whether you know it or not, to have dominion over your life and negativity. The attitude of gratitude is the key because God is still doing things for us. He's still on the throne. He's still making a way. He never promised us a perfect life. He just promised that he would be with us always. We just need to trust him. Yes, I know it's difficult. Yes, I know it's challenging, but that's what we need to dig in. We must stand in the fire, folks. We're at the final stages of this. Let's show him that we are grateful and push through and win. That's the whole key here. This summer is not going to look like anything we've ever experienced. You think that you've seen a lot for the first half of this year? 
you ain't seen nothing yet. Wait till you see what happens this summer and beyond. But our ability to stand together in unity in the fire, not in division, not in complaining, but in gratitude is what's going to make the difference and help us cross the finish line and be proactive in the light and helping those we care about so dearly. That wraps it up through this week. If there's anything major comes out, I will obviously come out and bring it to you in the breaking news section on our community page. Otherwise, have a great weekend, be safe, and we'll see you next week. God bless.